Well, to discuss where this leaves the seemingly never-ending case of Abu Qatada and the challenge it causes to the government, we can speak with the Shadow Home Office Minister, Chris Bryant, and Mark Lech Reckless, Conservative member of the Home Affairs Select Committee. Gentlemen, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Chris Bryant, what's the big deal? Uh, they're out by one day, maybe, uh, in the deadline. Uh, the case itself uh, is not affected, Theresa May's been saying. It'll take a long time. We're going to get this guy out of Britain. What's the big deal? Look, I want to see him, just as Theresa May does, just as Mark does, I want to see him on a plane to Jordan. Um, it's taken far too long for us to be able to get there, and the processes with the European Court are too slow and all the rest of it. But, uh, to be honest, if, if I had been the minister and somebody had come to me as a Home Office um, civil servant and said, look, we, we intend to arrest him tomorrow, I would, the first question I would have said was, are you absolutely certain that the way that we calculate the three months is the same way as the European Court calculates its three months. Because, frankly, I'm going to look like a right old fool if we've arrested him illegally um, because we've not managed to work out the number of days properly. So why somebody didn't just ring the European Court and say, excuse me, how do you calculate three months? Does, that, does it end on Tuesday or does it end on Wednesday? Well, and if there was any doubt, why don't you just wait for another 24 hours? No, no one has actually suggested that the arrest was illegal. Oh, no, uh, they have. Uh, yeah, well, 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 obviously, Mr. I, I'm, I don't want to speak for Mr. Katada. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with him. And sure, I, I, and I disagree entirely with the, uh, you know, the route that his lawyers are taking, but it's almost inevitable that they would. And, of course, they're arguing that he's been arrested illegally because the, the key bit where your, um, pers uh, the person who was speaking, Allegra, was just speaking incorrectly is that um, France and Italy, uh, just like every other country in the European Union, where there's a Rule 39, sorry to be technical, Go on. but where there's a Rule 39 judgment from the European Court, as there is in this case, um, ha you can simply cannot just then some put somebody on an aeroplane. They have to abide by it, otherwise they are breaking the law. Mark Reckless, you've called the Home Office here institutionally incompetent. Are you, uh, are you shocked by that? Not really. Um, the problem is, is uh, however badly the civil servants mess up, they're not held to account. And indeed, in many circumstances, they're promoted. I mean, take Lynn Homer. She was in charge of the border agency. We said again and again it was not fit for purpose. Yet she was then promoted to run HMRC. So this is an institutional thing for you. It's not just the one-off of Mr. Katada and his famous deadline. Uh, it's something bigger. Well, I mean, on this issue of the day, yes, I mean, yeah, take, take sort of Brodie, Brodie Clark, the Home Secretary was telling us that, you know, she was going to punish the officials responsible for the mess up to the border agency, and yet then he, he, he was given a, 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 a payoff. But the, and the problem isn't, isn't the one day. The issue is, is our own highest court has said that Katada can be sent back to Jordan. Indeed, the Home Secretary said he sh the court said he should be sent back to Jordan, interpreting the law as put by Parliament. Our own highest court has said he can be sent back. But he but should be sent back. Yeah, I, I agree with that bit. But, but it's a bit, of a bit of a, well, to be honest, a cluster shambles. Because the whole process that, um, that uh, Theresa May has undergone herself, and, and you can't just always blame the civil servants. Civil servants come to you, they advise. In the end, you make the decision. And if you're a good minister, you, you question every single detail. You go, do, are you absolutely certain that it's Tuesday and it shouldn't be Wednesday? If, you know, why can't I put them on an aeroplane? Every single element you have to question, and I just don't think that that's what Theresa May has done. Which she's not followed the detail. She did say all along it would take some months. She said it even yesterday. Well, actually, when she briefed it to the newspapers, or when her department briefed it to the newspapers, they were saying, you know, it's going to be happening this week, and, and specifically said the 30th of April. That's what the BBC was busily saying yesterday. And then she toned it down, down a bit for Parliament. But today, why hasn't she come to Parliament to say these things? She's had plenty of time to tour around... Um, you know, the, the studios, but she's not come to Parliament. And if you want to carry the British public with you on something like this, I think you have to go to Parliament and do it properly. She's your, she's your leader. Well, I'm afraid there is, I mean, David Cameron is our, our, our leader, and I'm afraid there's been craven subservience from ministers to a European court whose rulings are not binding, and to incredibly cautious advice from civil servants. And I suspect the Attorney General, if instead of having Dominic Green as Attorney General, we had Dominic Raab as our Attorney General, I believe Katada would already be back in Jordan. The government should act on what our Supreme Court has said, our highest court, then the House of Lords, now the Supreme Court, act on the basis of what Parliament says, not on the basis of the European Court. Its rulings are not binding. This is your dream, this is your ideal. There's no chance of this happening at this 
uh, much vaunted Brighton Summit of the 47 nations, is there? It's all been watered down in advance. Well, yes, but the, the UK, we have a different legal system from France and, uh, and Italy. It is our Supreme Court that is the highest court and Parliament that is supreme. We have said he can go back. Ministers should just put Qatar on a plane back to Jordan and put the safety of British citizens first. Uh, yeah, there's just one bit that I disagree with Mark in, in all of that, which is that I do believe in the European Court of Human Rights. It has actually protected people's, uh, it's given people uh, very important rights. This will, of course, run and run, as will the case of Abu Qatar, the gentleman. Well, so will he, I suspect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now,